with life. And it's weird, it's different. But here we are. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? We just have to, we just have to be adaptable and just make sure that, uh, that God is still the focus of what goes on here. And the Holy Spirit is powerful in this life. Uh, here's what I found out. I, I, I kind of had a little over here. We should have a pre recorded service, which is not mine. Watch it and uh, come in on Wednesday and was going to hear it until I had a game. And I discovered that the Holy Spirit was still here. He never left this place vacant. And so when you walked in the door today, he grabbed you. He's got you. You belong, you belong to him. And so we're grateful and thankful that you can come back together again. We can, we can work this out and. Uh, Probably, uh, Ben will announce this again at the end, and I'll probably do just one service after this, because we still have lots of space that we can put people in. We had, I don't know, what we had, 30? 39. 39 is the early one, so, so it worked out pretty well to split it up this time just to get a feel of what we need to do and to cover the government regulations, which they now have raised to 50% occupancy, so now we can actually go back. All right, um, we are going to um, worship together today. Isn't that cool? Remember, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and we get, to, we, get to, we get to take communion together today. That's an awesome gift of grace. So let's stand as we see this old person.
So we begin our worship then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this place. Thank you that uh, it has not been vacant from you. And that you are still here, and that you, have, you are here ahead of us, and you are here with us. Thank you so much for rearranging the situation in such a way that we can indeed meet today. Um, help all of us stay safe from this meeting time and walk us through uh, the power of your grace as we move forward in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, before I actually get into the confession, I want to uh, do a couple of thank yous here first. Holly and Chris, thank you for putting the music together and sending it uh, into the web stream or wherever, whatever you call that thing that we did. Uh, <coughs> page, web page, web page, and uh, we do it live and get that done. So thank you for doing that. And I love watching you. Where are you? Home? You don't know? You get your own recording studio? Sometimes, and then uh, we were stuck in North Dakota, so we were in her sister's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys, and thank you to musicians for being here this morning twice. I appreciate that. Thank you to Ben. Ben back there, uh, your chairperson from the congregation, has done a remarkable job during this vacancy and has uh, stepped up to the plate to help get us here and get set up and everything. And so, worked on getting me here <laughs> and uh, uh, working on with the district. So thank you so much, Ben, for all you're doing for this congregation. <laughs> and uh, Heather had to deal with me every single Wednesday of the last several days. So thank you for doing that. This is so good and calm at it that Nick we your help too as well. All right, you know what? One of the good things about gathering together is we can stand for the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ and just say we're not. We're not all together. We just don't have it all together. And uh, when Mary and I were in Korea, uh, we went, uh, we were able to take some trips outside of Seoul quite a bit, and we went with some Korean friends, and one of the places we went to then is we were able to live in an old, uh, stay overnight in an old 250-year-old house, Korean house, and in the middle of that thing was a dead tree. And they said, man, it's a dead tree. That tree, we should, we should cut that down. Use it for firewood or something. And the Korean said, oh no. Oh no, it might look dead. It might feel dead to you. It might not even carry any life. But come here. And they took me over to that tree and they're just coming out of the bottom. There's a whole new shoot, a whole new branch from that tree. Life was still coming out of death. That's what I feel like confession is. Confession is like maybe standing before Jesus and simply saying, you know, I'm like a dead tree. I'm like a tree that I sometimes feel has no use. That's our confession today. Just to stand before Jesus and say we're sorry that we might appear dead to you because of our sin. Let's take just a minute to reflect on that, and then I'll, I'll let you know what forgiveness looks like.
of us in some way, this is actually considered Trinity Sunday in uh, the church here. So, and we're going to be talking about how God is three persons but one God. We're going to be talking about that in Psalm 8, and uh, the other lessons will help us understand a little bit. So, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have sent your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers of the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and animals of the wild. The birds of the sky and the fish in the sea and all that swim in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the Lord of the Lord. Second lesson is recorded in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. The Apostle Paul is writing these words. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. I think it's interesting that he uses that phrase, because any, any of us, all of us, who are hooked into Jesus Christ have a calling. We are called into that relationship. We are called to be a part of his kingdom. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle, be patient and bearing with one another in love. Make every, effort, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in bond and peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one Lord when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel is uh, recorded in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning with the 25th verse. These words uh, are kind of the theme of the day. One of, this, one of the verses in here is the theme of the day. And it's one of those verses that just pulls at you and reminds you that God loves us so much. Listen, at that time Jesus said, in his feast, he's a speaking prayer right now, probably to his father, but also in front of the disciples. At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've given these things to the wise and learned and revealed them to the children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son he chooses to reveal him. That's, that's you. That's you guys. Uh, here's the verse. That's why I um, try to listen to as often as I possibly can in my journey of faith. Come to me. Can you just hear Jesus? All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's uh, speak on our foundation of faith and glory to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Lord Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy Spirit, he descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence you will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. You may be seated, please. And uh, I'm not going to have the uh, 
Ну, то что можно сейчас сказать? На коленах, как вот ты. These are 
uh, fruit trees, uh, flowering trees in the backyard, and uh, they, uh, my wife, about 10 days ago or so, looked out the window, and, and it just rained like crazy, just a big storm, it, it rained. And she looked out the window and she said, look how, look how heavy those trees are. Look how the rain has pushed those branches of those trees all the way down to almost on the deck. It's amazing how that rain, just that rain, came into our world that day and took those trees and brought them way down to where they were so heavy and so weary of, uh, of, of wanting them. They wanted to stand back up again. They wanted, they wanted the weeds to go back up again, and they didn't quite know how to do it. And they were very heavy laden, which is in our text today. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden. Some should translate say burden. But I like the word laid. Just sounds heavy, doesn't it? <laughs> laid. I'm just laid today. It just sounds like it's something that's ominous in our lives. And those, <coughs> those flowering trees stay laden, stay weary until the sun came back out, drying them off. And you can almost stand there and watch those branches go back up, reaching towards the sky again. When I read the lesson, when I read the text from Matthew today, where Jesus so wonderfully invites us to come, come to him, we, we who are weary and heavy laden, just to come to him. Um, we, we've got all other kinds of ways that we try to take care of the heaviness in our hearts. We do, we've got all kinds of ways that we try to solve our issues and take care of our worries and wonders and fears. But what Jesus says today is to come to him. Let, him. let him hear what you have to say. Let him feel what you carry. Let him take that which you know is heavy laden. Let him take that and work with you about it. Let him kind of mold and shape your life in a way that he can help you carry some of those some of those worries. So what, what are some of the things that we are worried about? What are some of the things that we are getting today? Well, I mean, it's a, probably, probably a no-brainer to make the list today. Stay in the home. I was telling the big back there in the corner or somebody. Um, I was doing this recording on Wednesdays. It would be broadcast on Sundays. On Sunday morning, for a pastor, you got to know it on Sunday. That's heavy today. <laughs> that's, that's hard. That's tough. So the state of the whole thing was, was a little bit difficult, a little bit worrisome for me. I imagine it was for you. Kids, oh my goodness, kids, you must. You know, go to school the last two months on the computer and you can't see your friends as much as you want. Uh, so you're driving, right, baby? You're driving now? Oh, boy. Okay, so that's, so you go to see friends now? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, so that's good. What is it that we are weary some from? I think there's a lot of things we can make of this. If I was money or loss of job or or you just, uh, just feel good or whatever it is. Too much to carry, too many things to think about, too many decisions to make, all those different things make us weary and make us heavy laden. But I want, I want to let you know something today. And it's okay, it's okay to carry some weight of fear and worry and trouble. But when you're carrying that weight, come to Jesus with it. Come to let Him. And He doesn't always just flick it off your shoulders so you never have to worry about it again. But He'll come and walk alongside you and get up, get up with you and help you to carry some of those words. If you just tell Him about it, if you just come to Him and say, Jesus, I'm just worn out today. I'm weary. I don't know, what, I don't know how to make ends me, I don't know what kind of decisions to make. The worry about our church. Come to me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Ah, rest. How good does it feel 
They dropped their burdens at the foot of the cross. My wife and I, our first call out of the seminary in St. Louis was Papua New Guinea and uh, <laughs> had them planned to go to Papua New Guinea. They didn't know where it was. So we took our four months old son, got on a plane, flew to Papua New Guinea, and then over at 8,000 feet in the middle of the island, and uh, stayed there for six years, and, uh, and, and enjoyed it. We got to my, my, my wife was in the early service, and um, I could never have done that without her. I could never have done, in fact, I can't do any ministry without her keeping up with me. And so she was a great team member as we tried to struggle with the jungle of love of getting. But one of the things that stuck with me was that the women, women were really hard. Women were the hardest workers. The men kind of sat around and settled for cases and talked a lot. So like America. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But one of the things women did, the men would uh, up the gardens and then the women would plant sweet potatoes. That was the basic food in Papua New Guinea. And they weighed six pounds of sweet potato per person per day. No marshmallows. Nothing, nothing on top of it. It's just out of the sun of fire. But one of the things the women had to do was to make sure sweet potatoes were up at the husband's house. They each had separate houses. Up at the husband's house and up at their house every day. And so she would go down to the gardens and she would fill the room full of maybe 60 to 70 pounds of sweet potatoes. And she would wrap the pickles in there and she would uh, tie this up like this. And she would uh, throw this on her head. And then she would walk up the mountains until she got to her house. 70 pounds of sweet potatoes. And they never wore shoes, and they had shoes in the beginning. And so you could tell the feet were thick, sole feet. And you could tell the woman who worked hard, because she would walk like this, trying to dig her toes into the mud and the slipperiness of those long roads, long paths, and she'd walk up to those, uh, that, that place. This is called a building. And when she got to the top of the house, she would take that building, She'd take it down, drop it. She'd drop it. Do you know how good that must have felt when you drop 70 pounds of sweet potatoes? <laughs> she carries pigs in here, she carries babies, and the babies are born from putting this bill on there, carrying around, and she rocks them in the bill while she's working on the ground. 70 pounds of sweet potato off your shoulders. That's what it's like to come to Jesus. That's what it's like to simply stand at the foot of the cross and take that sin within you and take that stuff that the world has thrown at you and take that evil that is out there and take the, take the, the devil's attempts at trying to sway you, sway you away from your faith. That's what it feels like to drop 70 pounds of sin, to drop 70 pounds of worry, to drop 70 pounds of fear at the foot of the cross. Ah, rest. When I was a senior pastor at uh, Hosanna Luther Church in Mankato before we went to South Korea, um, we had five services. It started with a Wednesday service, Wednesday night service, and, and the band at that Wednesday night service was called Lifted. And uh, we talked earlier, Darren Scruggs, who's now Pastor Darren Scruggs. Darren worked at Comforts, and uh, I walked in there a couple times and saw him and said, Darren, we need a youth director. How about if you come and help us? He said, I don't know anything about it. I said, you don't have to know anything. Do you love Jesus? Yeah, I love Jesus. You're hired. That's all I want is somebody who loves Jesus. You can learn all the rest. But if you love Jesus, now Darren's a pastor. And he is, I don't know if you ever heard him preach, one of the best I've ever heard. He's so good. And he loves the people who love Jesus. And he's talented. He can play the piano, sing, he writes music, he writes songs. And he, uh, he 
he had started this band that Wednesday night. He was the responsible person for this band. It was called Lifted. And um, uh, it was such a great name. And you know when they sing, you know that you feel very good at doing it. You know the music coming from these guys makes you feel a lot better about yourself and about how God loves you. That's what that band did on Wednesday night. That's what this band does here on Sunday mornings. When you come in, you might be reading some verbs. When you leave, our prayer is that Jesus has talked to you personally and lifted you. And lifted you so that you might hear him more clearly and love him more dearly. To be lifted is an amazing thing. Don't underestimate the voice of Jesus Christ in your individual life and in the life of this congregation. He simply wants to tell you, come to me. Just come to me. Just come to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are is uh, walking to uh, communion here pretty soon and then during communion we'll have you come up with a section at a time and then you put the empty cup here and you're offering in the basket or in the plate over there. So let's pray.
very much. Right. Just a couple of announcements. Next week we'll go back to one service, 10 o'clock. Just got to be patient as the government keeps changing the rules. We'll just keep adjusting. Uh, then I'm going to announce a pre-call meeting for June 21st. The district will come down and get us going with the call process to find a pastor. So there'll be a voters meeting at the end of that church service. That's all I got. Okay. Next week, yeah, we'll have to change the chairs again. <laughs>